1954, a skinny medical student at Oxford named Roger Bannister became the first person to run a mile in less than four minutes. And here's what made this such a big deal. People thought it couldn't be done. Dozens of medical journals had reported that it was physically impossible for the human body to break through that barrier. And back then, the popular assumption held that if anyone tried to run faster than 15 miles an hour, they would die. People actually thought that. No one had yet challenged this belief. But Bannister was different. He systematically attacked the record, breaking through it by a fraction of a second. How? He got scientific on how to best approach the four minute mile. Roger Bannister built a treadmill in a lab at his school and tested lactic acid levels by taking blood samples. This allowed him to observe from a scientific standpoint what was physically possible and how to go about that. And that was back in the early 1950s. Roger Bannister, the British one mile record holder, lines up with five other runners for a race which ended by making history. Immediately after the start, Brasher, the Olympic steeplechaser, took the lead to pace Bannister for the first half mile. Chataway's lying in third position. The race was run at Oxford as part of a meeting between the Amateur Athletic Association and Oxford University. After two and a half laps, Chataway took over from Brasher. With three quarters of a mile covered, Chataway was one yard ahead, and in spite of a strong crosswind, the tempo of the race began to promise a really fast mile. With 250 yards to go, 25-year-old Bannister took the lead with an amazing burst of speed. He went on to achieve the world record of a mile in under four minutes, sought after by athletes for over 40 years. His time was three minutes, 59.4 seconds. He'd obviously used up his last ounce of energy, but what an achievement for Bannister and Britain. I, as a, as a medical student, knew that there wasn't a brick wall. If you could run it in four minutes and, and 2.2 seconds, then you would be find somebody else somewhere who trained a little better, had better conditions on the day, was able to use the pace judgment better, and they could do it. So that was the frame of mind in which I approached it. But I want to focus on with you is what happened after Roger Bannister's four minute mile. Though this is well, less well known. Another runner, Australian John Landy, also broke the four minute barrier one and a half months later. The next season, a few more runners did it too. Then runners started breaking it in droves. Within three years of Roger Bannister breaking the record, 17 runners had matched the greatest accomplishment of the 20th century. What had happened? Nothing profound had changed. The track surfaces were the same. The training was the same. The genetic makeup of the athletes was the same. But the 17 run runners had received a very clear signal. You can do this too. And that four minute mark, once an insurmountable wall, was instantly recast as a stepping stone. The seminal sporting achievement of the 20th century, the four minute mile, showed how one person could be a catalyst for change for others. And once one person or one team breaks through widely held beliefs that someone or something said can't be done, the unattainable can be attained. The impossible can be possible.